making a model from start to finish using your own photographs as textures. I type in the address under Add Location for Sal's Pizza in North Billerica, find the building, surround it with a nice rectangle. I need just the building mostly, so I get the building in view. Then go to Top Down View in SketchUp so that you can see it straight down from the top. That's under Camera, Standard Views. And then the first thing I always do is go to the large tool set and pick the axis tool so that you can change the axis so that it's along a straight edge of the building. This helps modeling and make it, it will make it much easier. And then I go to X-ray view under face style to help me turn the sketch up into tracing paper. Makes it much easier to trace the outline of buildings and then pulling up the building and one of the tricks I use here is I'm going to go to Add Photo Texture. Right click on one, the front face and Add Photo Texture, which will let you go into Street View and get a picture from the Street View of this building. It, it's not going to be used as a texture. It just helped me to see how big the building is. And then once I have that, I can adjust the building so that it fits the um, size of that building. And I'm using technique where I use the roof, where I do the roof first, because the roof is the most distinctive part of a building. Then I use the paint dropper tool to paint the terrain onto the roof to help me model it. There's a distinctive um, slope on that roof and a peak on it that I want to put in and make it look very real. So I pull up that rectangle, erase anything that I don't need, the bottom part, and then just attach all of the edges to make my slope and angles. And this helps to make it very regular. And using that axis tool at the beginning is what's helping this to be easier. If the axis was wrong, this would not be easy. And then I pull up that middle section and take just the top face and use the scale tool, which is in your large tool set again, and make the top face smaller than the bottom parts, which gives you that slanted slope up. It makes it look like that building's roof. And then the next step I need to get under that roof so I can pull the building from under the roof, pull it down. And I use the offset tool to create the edge that I need. All roofs have edges and if you don't add them the building doesn't look real. It looks amateurish. So putting um, the edge on makes it to look much better. Then I have a folder of photographs that I took of the building, front view, side view, back views, and I'm going to use these to apply the texture. So I go into File, Import, Use as Texture. Don't pick the other two choices. This is a texture. And then slide it onto the building, and then I right click on that face to adjust it. Go to Texture, Position, and that will let you adjust it, put it where it belongs. You can stretch it, you can pull it, you can angle it just to make it fit that face. The better it fits the more real it's going to look. And then I do the same thing on the other sides. I have side views that I've already worked on in Photoshop. I can't show all those Photoshop techniques in this video. It'll just take too long. But they've all been fixed and photo uh, pictures of cars and distractions have been taken off using the clone tool. So it's just this building itself. No distractions. And then the next step is to check and see how it's fitting into the terrain. You want it to be sinking a little bit into the terrain so it sits but doesn't float. Now I'm going to model the side, um, the entrance, which is a little uh, part of the building that juts out. And again, I'm going to use the roof down method where I pick and start with the roof and pull the building part down from the roof so I can have an edge or an eaves on it that makes it look, again, all the details help. Sometimes you have to use the offset tool to create that edge, which is what I'm doing here. Pulling it down, getting the eaves, details, details, erasing any unneeded lines. Anywhere you see a line that you don't need, get rid of it. Now I'm going to use some guidelines to help me draw that gable. I need to know where the middle of the front of that is, so I pull that straight up and then one straight in, and the axis helps here. That When I change the axis, it makes all of this easier. 
that first step makes everything else come along so much easier if you have a straight axis to help you. Now the front there I need to do the positioning again so you just right click choose texture position and then you move it along until it's sitting where it belongs. And uh, I'm going to use a trick where I pick a rectangle on the roof to make unique texture. You right click and make it a unique texture and then use the eyedropper to pick up that texture which becomes a paint chip and then you can erase the rectangle. You don't need it anymore after you've painted it in other places. And I'll do the same thing on this little side um, view of the building which has one window. Make that a unique texture and I can pick that up and paint it on the other side. So I don't have to have a huge photograph sitting on that little side building. And I'm doing the same trick. Rectangle, make a unique texture in a good spot. So then you use the paint dropper and paint all of the edges. No matter how small, it has to be painted. Any place that's not painted could mean that it would be rejected by the Google reviewers. And in the back, I'm just splitting that back building by using a line, and then I can move my already used photograph into different places so that it fits. So I'm creating that back view just by using one line to split it and arranging it using the positioning tool painting my textures as I go along. It's almost done now. Another texture that I need, I grab, make it a unique texture, pick it up with a paint chip, and I have siding. You shouldn't use Google's built-in uh, SketchUp textures when you're doing geo modeling. You should use only your own textures. And then again, the back building that juts out, I'm using the guideline method, making a gabled roof erasing any unneeded texture uh, areas and pulling the building down from the roof down. Erasing unneeded lines, applying some textures I've already built, doing the roof, and then painting up places that are distorted. You can leave some of that roof on the way it is because it helps it to blend in to Google Earth better. Now the last step is that uh, big sign on the top of the roof that makes it look like Sal's Pizza. So I just pull up a rectangle, push pull it, make it a group in a minute. Uh, then I apply the photograph to it first before I group it, position it, and then right click on that and make it a group. Groups don't stick to other parts. So when I put it on the roof, I don't want it to pull the roof and distort it. So it will help it to not distort. And then adjust, put it in just the right place so it looks real. Move it around. And one of the, we're almost at the end here, and one of the last few steps is to make your building an empty shell. Any part that doesn't show on the inside should be deleted. It gets rid of extra uh, lines and polygons. It makes the file smaller, which will help it when it's on Google Earth. It helps it to load faster. And then I scale the whole building slightly so I pull it down into the terrain so I know that it's not floating. And then adjusting uh, shadow settings makes the building look more real. When you're ready to upload it, you want it to put on its best face. So add some shadows to it and play around with the time of day and the time of year and you can get some good shadow settings to make it look more real makes it look like a building sitting in the sun. And then fill your frame. Make sure your building is as big as you can make it in the frame of um, the SketchUp window. And I turn off the edges. So under Edge Style, uncheck edges so that all the lines aren't showing. There are no lines that show in Google Earth, so this will help it look more like it will be in Google Earth. Then go, lastly, go to your model info and sign your creation. You go to credits and claim credit for it. This permanently attaches your name to this building. And then purge unused, under statistics, do purge unused. And then share your model, give it a name. You have to sign into your Google account to do this. Give it a good description. And then to have your model included in this project collection, add Billrica 3D or the word Billrica into your tags and it will be automatically placed there. And then finally upload it.
make sure you say it's geolocated and then it goes into 3d warehouse and good luck with your submission hopefully it will be accepted